Hi everyone, Jason from MakeCara here, and in this video we're learning how to install and configure the optional 4th Axis module on our Carvera CNC. The 4th Axis module allows for us to create parts using a 4th Axis in addition to the typical features of our Carvera CNC. This opens up near limitless possibilities as we can create complex parts or intricate designs using a wide range of materials. So we first need to attach the 4th Axis module to our Carvera, and we want to make sure that the Carvera is powered off before we move forward and do that. It's also important to make sure that there are no corner clamps on your bed. Install two dowel pins in the preset holes towards the front of your bed. Then plug in the fourth axis module using the port on the left side of your bed. Carefully lower and align the module with the dowel pins while ensuring that the plug for the module is not caught between the module and the bed. Next, secure the module in place using six M5 by 20 screws. Lastly, power on the Carvera to reset and configure the fourth axis. The chuck jaws of the rotary module can be tightened and loosened using the two wrenches provided. Rotating the wrenches towards each other tightens the chuck, while rotating the wrenches away from each other will loosen or open the chuck more. The chuck jaws can also be installed in two different configurations so you can hold a wider range of stock sizes. To remove the jaws, loosen the chuck all the way. Note as you get closer to the outermost position, the chuck will become tighter and harder to rotate. Carefully wiggle the jaws as you loosen the chuck so they can be removed one by one. Each jaw is numbered one through four. For the alternate configuration, which holds smaller stock, we must load the jaws from one to four. For the default configuration, which holds larger stock, we must load the jaws from four to one. As you load the jaws, you may need to wiggle them by hand to first seat them and thread them onto the chuck. The tail stock can be slid along the rotary module by first loosening the two set screws on either side. You do not need to fully remove these screws. We can also loosen the set screw at the top of the tailstock so that we can rotate the handle which is used to clamp the tailstock into our parts. When securing typical pieces of stock like the epoxy tooling board shown in the example project, we must first find the center on one side of our stock. We also recommend drilling a small hole on the center point to assist in securing it within the rotary module. We can loosen the chuck of our rotary module using the two wrenches provided. We also need to loosen the set screws on our tailstock so we can then slide it so it makes contact with the center hole we drilled into our stock. Tighten these two set screws for the rail of our tailstock so it cannot move away from our part. Next, tighten the chuck jaws so the stock is held securely within the center of the chuck. Finally, rotate the knob of the tailstock to press it and secure it into a piece of material, then tighten the set screw at the top of the tailstock. We typically rotate square stock so the corner aligns with the vertical axes or up and down as shown in the example guidebook. And before running any jobs with the fourth axis module, we also need to prepare our tool head. First, raise and lock the dust shoe bracket to the highest position, then remove the dust shoe entirely. You can then secure the dust collection hose in place by using the clip on the tool head. Using the air assist nozzle is not required for fourth axis machining, but it can be a handy tool to use for chip evacuation. You can connect your compressor or air pump via the port on the back of the Carvera. The air assist nozzle pressure can be adjusted by first pulling the blue knob outward, then rotating it to increase or decrease flow. The angle of the nozzle can also be easily adjusted as well. After connecting and turning on your air source, you can enable the air assist nozzle within the diagnostic window of the Carvera controller. Within the Carvera controller's config and run window, we should see that the fourth axis is set within the work origin menu whenever a fourth axis file has been loaded into the Carvera controller. We want to set our X offset relative to the right edge of the fourth axis headstock, while the Y offset can be set to zero. Scan margin can be enabled, which will trace the length of our part using the laser pointer before machining. An auto Z probe should also be enabled, which will be set to a fixed position specifically for the fourth axis module. Auto leveling is not used for fourth axis designs. Once manufacturing is complete, you can clean off the part by using a brush or a vacuum, and always turn off the Carvera before loosening the chuck and set screws to release your parts from the rotary module. And that's all there is to it. By equipping the fourth axis, your manufacturing abilities are vastly expanded as the Carvera can now machine parts with greater versatility. Thanks for watching, and of course, please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for future how-to videos and project posts on the official Make Hera channel.